Well, hello, everybody, and welcome. I really had a great time doing this problem. I hope you do, too. Let's get into the details so that you can know all of it. That way you can try to solve it on your own. So here's what we've got. We've got a semicircle. Center of that semicircle is the point O right here. And we have two triangles, right? So let's go ahead and name some points so we can talk about the triangles. We have triangle A, B, D, and its area is 28. We have another triangle, uh, D, B, C, and its area is 7. And we are also shown this little right angle right here. So we are also told that B, D is going to be perpendicular to A, C. And our goal, once again, is to find the area of the semicircle. So why don't you go ahead and pause it, try it on your own, and then come back, see if you got what I got, see if you did it the same way or a different way, and let me know how you did. Are you ready? I'm going to share with you my game plan right now. All right, so here's the way I approached this problem. Uh, I started messing around with areas of triangles. There's a relationship between a diameter and a perpendicular chord, and I even explored some similar triangles that I didn't need to explore. Uh, the diameter cord one I did in a video that I'll share the link to in the description below, but that's how I tackled this problem. And if you got stuck earlier and you'd like to try it on your own now with this information, maybe that'd be enough to get you over the hump. So why don't you go ahead and try it again now? Now, the reason I know this is my game plan isn't because I figured it out ahead of time. Here's actually a picture of all my work with a couple little mistakes, like right here, that should be divided by two, and some extra exploration that isn't needed before I arrived at the answer. So, I mean, that's how these problems go. You don't know how they're going to work out. You just, I don't know. Come up with a game plan, chase it, see what you need. All right, here we go. Here's how I solved it, right? So first thing first, we're looking for the area of the semicircle. So that's pi r squared over 2. Let's go ahead and put that in the corner over here. That's our goal. Figure out the radius. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about some of these parts. So we'll say a to d is y and d to c is x. And of course, d to b is the height. All right, and we know that the radius is going to be then x plus y divided by 2, right? And I also know that x times y is going to be equal to h squared. And if you're not sure how that works, I will leave a link in the description where I derive that formula from a similar problem, all right? Now, we also have some areas of triangles right here. So one half base times height is the area of a triangle. So one half x times h is 7, and one half y times h is 28. All right. So those are some things we can gather just by looking at the diagrams using what we know. All right. So let's go ahead and see if we can simplify these two things right here. Uh, see if we can solve for h. So if we multiply both sides by 2 and divide by x or y, here's what we've got. We've got h is equal to 14 over x and h is equal to 56 over y. Now this 14 over x... I'm going to go ahead and tuck that away because I'm going to use that again here in the future. Um, but for right now, let's go ahead and set these two things equal and see if we can simplify that into something a little cleaner. See if we can express X in terms of Y or Y in terms of X. You ready? Let's go ahead and cross multiply and let's go ahead and divide by 14 so we can see that Y is equal to 4 times x. All right. So now we know this is 4x. So let's go ahead and put 4x right there. And we know this is y is 4x. So let's go ahead and put 4x right there. 4x plus 1x. Well, that's, of course, 5x. So now the radius is two and a half times the distance of x. So that's kind of nice. And we also know this y right here is 4x. So let's go ahead and plug that in. And now we can actually simplify for this thing right here, it's solve for h, and we can express h in terms of x. So that's kind of cool. We just used a little property. It's kind of a weird one, but I happen to remember it because I kind of, well, I made a video about it, and I kind of stumbled on it on accident in the past, and I thought it was pretty neat, so it stuck in my mind. But then just using properties of, you know, triangles and their areas, and, you know, just it all kind of comes together. I think that's really fun. So anyway, uh, 4x squared is equal to h squared, so 2x is equal to h. So the height is 2x. That's pretty cool. All right, so now 
I know h is equal to 2x. I also know h is equal to 14 over x. So if we solve that, if we can set those two things equal to each other, then we can figure out what x equals, right? So multiply both sides by x, divide by 2, right? So x squared is 7, so x is, of course, then the square root of 7. All right, we know what x is. Man, that's pretty cool. So now we can just plug that value of x in right here. The radius is 5x divided by 2, so that's 5 root 7 divided by 2. That's our radius. That's all we need. Now we can plug that in. We can find the area of the semicircle. So r is right there. So let's go ahead and square it before we plug it into the formula because it is a little bit ugly. So let's go ahead and square it right here. Let's see. 5 squared is 25. 2 squared is 4. And the square root of 7 squared is, of course, 7. So if you have 7 quarters, you have $1.75 divided by 4, of course. That's the radius squared. So let's go ahead and plug that into, well, our formula. We get 175 pi over 4 divided by 2. And that's, of course, going to make 175 pi divided by 8. Hey, I hope you had a great time doing this problem. I really did. I loved this one. It was really a lot of fun. If you came up with a different uh, solution, a different method, I'd love to hear from you, see what you did. And if you liked it, learned something, had a good time, leave me a, another comment, like, subscribe, comment, share, thumbs up, all that kind of stuff. Even though that wasn't really a functional sentence, <laughs> you get the idea. Hey, until next time, I hope you have a great day.